So I'd like to say I'm so excited and happy to be here at Cisco Live. So did you all attend the keynote yesterday? Uh, the message was fantastic and meaningful to me. It was about digital transformation, and it said now is the time. Now's the time for what? It's the time to lead. It's the time to innovate. It's the time to disrupt. And so I figure if someone like me, I had never started a company in my 40s. I didn't know what I was doing. I had never taken a business class. I didn't know anything. If someone like me can help innovate, can help disrupt, then I think everybody in this room can do that. Uh, there was also a message in the keynote yesterday of, of social activism, social change. And so I'm known for having helped start Siri, but I'm also, I helped start a company called change.org, which is the world's largest petition platform. 165 million people, if you see something wrong, you can go online, you say this is what's wrong, people agree or disagree, but, but they vote, and then change happens. So try to go out, disrupt, take your vision, your passion, make things happen in the world at large scale. And if I can do it, you can definitely do it. So today, I'm going to take you on a journey, the journey of Siri. And we're going to do it in an interesting way. We're going to explore the future by going back in time. And people say, what? And so. The reason is, I say, everybody knows the Siri that we have in our phone today, and it's great. People tell me, my kids talk to it, they use it for their homework, for many things, but could it be more? What could be more? And I say, well, did you know that when Siri came out in 2011 by Apple, it was wonderful, but the version we had in 2010 was so good it did things that never made it into the 2011 version. It was so good, Steve Jobs called the company out of the blue, a tiny little startup company. So that's unusual. And then there was a version before that that was so good, it did things that never made it into the 2010 version. So I'm going to take you back in time, the story behind Siri, to understand the future of the automated assistant, what's going to happen now. And this future, it's not just interesting, I think it will be important to everyone here, as important as the internet is important, as important as mobile is important. I think the assistant will be a paradigm in the next two to three years that will change everyone's life in this room. And we're going to explore that. So come with me on my journey. So as I mentioned, we're going back to the future to understand the future by looking at what came before, the past. And as Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only understand them. You can only connect them by looking backwards. So to travel into the future and to the past, we need a time machine. So I've imagined, you know, this is maybe the Apple Watch version, I don't know, 23 or something like that. It's a little bit more digital than the current, or, or analog than the current uh, Apple Watch. But on a watch like this, a time piece, of course it should have a time machine. Apple has a product called Time Machine, but it's not in their, their watch yet. And so, and of course, uh, our timepiece of the future should have Siri in it. So Siri, take me back to October 4th, 2011. And here we are. So on October 4th, it was a very special and important day in my life and in my journey. This was the day that Apple announced Siri to the world. And then the very next day, Steve Jobs died. So I'm not sure people knew that. 
And Siri for him was perhaps his last great project. He worked closely with us. He cared about this uh, so much. And at, you know, we had maybe about a year of working closely with him. And then six months at Apple, he started to get sick. But we know that he was watching uh, the launch of Siri from his house. And I don't know this for true, for true but it, it, I believe it. I think he saw this. He knew the future that was coming. And he said, I can go now. Apple will be dominant for the next, uh, the next 10 years. So let's look a little bit at Siri. Cancel call today. It's off your calendar. Good, because it's day three. Siri, what's my day look like? Another busy day today. Are you serious? Yes, I'm not allowed to be frivolous. Oh, OK. We have a flat tire. How do I tie a bow tie again? What's the fastest way to Hartford Hospital? Do I need an umbrella in New York this weekend? Remind me to call Chris when I get home. Move my meeting from three to four. What does a weasel look like? Is it cold in Santa Fe, Raleigh, Cleveland tonight? Really cold, down to about 14 degrees. What is the weather like today? Look out the window, you moron. My name is Rajesh, but you can call me Raj. Would you like me to call you Raj? I'd like you to call me sexy. <laughs> From now on, I'll call you sexy, okay? Okay! <laughs> Sir, are you married? Steve, everything is happening so fast. The unboxing, the setup, people will judge us. Those who claim robot love is wrong. But I don't care about that anymore. Steve, I love you. Yes, yes, I'll marry you. Congratulations. So as you see, when Siri came out, it became very, very popular. There were commercials on TV. There were speakers on late night TV. And there were hundreds, maybe thousands of fan videos. So someone here showed me one yesterday. I don't know if you've heard of it, called Hot, Hot Siri uh, in Mexico. If you haven't seen it, go take a look. I think it's very funny with all the different regional Mexican accents talking to Siri. Uh, so Siri came out, and on that day, October 4th, let me tell you what it felt like for me. This is a tool that in my life I always use, and maybe you can too. So when I'm working on something, when I'm, I'm fighting for something, I try to imagine and visualize what would success look like. And so when we started the company Siri, it was just a few people, and I walked into an Apple store, and we were trying to build an Apple product, and I saw on the wall there were these icons in the Apple store of all the big guys. There was Pandora, there was Skype, there was Google. And I said, what would success be like if this works Someday, someday, Siri will be right there on the wall of an Apple store. And it was the biggest vision, the biggest dream I could imagine at this time. And so on October 4th, when Siri is coming out, I had to go to an Apple store. I had to see, are people buying it? Do they like it? What's it like? And so I went to the Apple store on that day, and this is what I saw. I walked up, and the store was full, but I walk up and I see a sign that says, introducing Siri with a plasma display showing Siri on a loop. And the juxtaposition gave me chills, because I remember wanting to be one icon out of 100. And now we were the front door of an Apple store. It just, it just blew my mind. So it's just a personal story but it's something you can use. Try to visualize success, and more often than not, life will find a way to surprise you and tweak you and say, remember? Well, look at this, look at this.